Hey guys, this is Laurel, Laurel with the Dabbling Hook. How are you guys doing? I swear between last end of summer last year and through this year, I feel like I've come on here. I come on here with nothing but woes. And excuse the lighting, I am fighting the light, you know, because summer's over pretty much. <laughs> Even though we're having like heat waves, summer's over. Um, the the lighting is very fallish. The air is starting to feel very fallish, um, barring, you know, the little heat waves that we're having, which we're having today. And I'm going to take this off and I'll talk about this in a little while, but I'm taking it off because it is part wool and whew, I'm hot. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Um, I think I've been gone for what, two, three weeks? Um, I've been gone because we had a family medical emergency. It's not the minions, any of the minions. Um, but it is on my side of the family and uh, we are still dealing with it. Um, it required hospitalization and uh, we just had a reoccurrence. So um, yeah, life is lifing in 2020. Well, you know, 2020 is being 2020. So <sighs> I hope you guys are doing better. I, as you saw, I'm being naughty. Who can guess what I'm having? Did you guess some wine tea? Yeah. It's that time of year, right? I have tea all the time, every day, multiple times a day, but wine tea time, I think. I need to go buy cranberry juice because we typically don't buy juice for this household. So I think I'm in need of some cranberry and wine. <laughs> so um, today's just a, a catch up and again, the last few videos have had no rhyme or reason. So whatever comes to mind is what I will pull up and talk about. So, and pardon me if I keep rubbing my face, but it's like I said, it's warm and uh, we're dealing with it and I'm having tea so you know okay um what have I been doing I've been sewing I've been knitting um crocheting I think more knitting than crocheting that seems to be a thing going around right now in the crochet world right um I think it's just it's fun to learn new things for a lot of people and um, it's fun not just to learn but to like finally get that aha and aha moment and really um, figure things out so um, yeah I've been doing a lot more knitting I don't know why I have crocheted but I think I have just as many well not just as many I have more crochet whips than I do knitting but um, for some reason the knitting's working right now so uh, first, um, I want to apologize, one, to Christy, and, um, I don't know if she watches my video, but there was, um, someone who bought my, one of my bags, and I always put a little lavender sachet in there. Um, I love lavender, I love the smell of it, um, and I always included it in one of my bags, and some people are allergic and I do remember um, someone had told me that I think maybe sometime last year and I think it was something I had sent to somebody I couldn't remember who it was and it just it slipped my mind and then I saw Christy um, she had mentioned it again and I was like oh no and again life was lifing and I forgot and somebody bought a bag and um, thankfully, she didn't have a horrible allergic reaction. She just had like coughing and that type of reaction to it. So um, what I have done is on Etsy, I have put in an option t for you to choose whether or not you want the lavender included in your purchase um, if and when you do make one. So hopefully that will help out. Um, so speaking of bags, and again, I do apologize to anybody that... Um, this negatively affected hopefully we won't have that again um, so bags um, I have probably shouldn't have started with the tea right before recording huh <laughs> I um, oh, oh 
I forgot to show. I'm having wine tea. <laughs> See, Jennifer, I told you it would come in handy, right? Yep, it has, and it fits perfectly. Um, it'll definitely be, uh, I'm a little body conscious, so, uh, especially when it comes to tight things on me. So it it's fits with just a little give, and um, but tight enough for my sensibilities that it would be an inside shirt or something that I layer on top of, but it's not going anywhere. It's mine because <laughs> it's perfect. Um, I'm going to go turn the fan on towards me because it is warm and I'm sure the wine tea is not helping. So I will be right back. All right. So I'm going to have to talk fast too because it is five something and I can't see 530 maybe. And, uh, the sun's out, but you know, I'm losing the inside light. Anyway, where was I going with that? I don't know. I've been uh, a little stressed the last few weeks. So I've been knitting, crocheting, I've been sewing. I have been watching people's videos, but I just, I haven't had the energy to sit down and record and then um, edit and do all of that. It's just, the YouTube's always on in the background for me, whether I'm working or whatever. So it's, uh, it's not that hard to just be always watching, but I don't always comment because I can't always do that because of what I'm doing. But I have made two bag updates. Um, I did a pretty good size one, was it a week, two weeks ago maybe? And then um, I had bought some Halloween fabric and I had forgotten a small, um, a small bunch I had bought, not a bunch, but uh, I think I would bought like two yards or something and I found it when I was going through my, I was trying to organize my fabric in my new, on my new sewing table and I found the Halloween fabric. So today, today is Tuesday, by the way, the 8th, I think today's the 8th. Um, so I just made, um, I had, I think, two, three or four, I think I have one more left. Halloween fabric. Yeah, I have one left that I haven't cut into yet. But the two that I did cut into, I did sew up all the bags. And the print is this. I love that it's not, I love bright, just happy colors. But there's certain subtle colors um, that really get me, and this one did. So this is just like a, a off-white background, beigey off-white background with cats and owls and pumpkins on it. And I'm not one of those people who only uses like a Christmas bag um, at Christmas or a Halloween bag at Halloween. Case in point, one of my whips has been in this bag by Crochet Luna. It's a Christmas theme bag. Use it all the time. So. I have a few drawstring bags. Um, oh, you see the oopsie, because that's an actually an oopsie in the store. Uh, my iron, I don't know what I rested on or what it touched, but I didn't realize there's something under it or on the iron when I went to iron this. It, a little bit of it got on here, so that's an oopsie bag. Perfectly functional, but it has that on there. So I have one, two, three, four, five of these, including the oopsie with different um, tops on it. So those are in the store. Doo, doo, doo. One of them even has orange, one has black polka dots, or two of them have black polka dots. Um, so after I cut those out, what was left, I try to use up all the bags, and what I have is literally scraps left, or I try to use all the fabric. So I ended up with um, three different size of zipper bags, and this is a very large one medium size one and a smaller one. So I was able to get three zipper bags out of that and this fabric. I sort of remember buying it, but by the time I was done making the bags, I don't know what it is. I just, I love it. And I don't think I have that much even scraps left of it. I have to go through my scraps to see because I think I'm gonna make me a scrappy bag that includes this in there. But I don't know why but it's just calling to me, you know. So there are two of these that have 
um, the same fabric all the way through with um, a different color lining. And then when I ran out of that, I have one that has a black top. So those are in the store and I'm gonna show you a stack of the, the previous update that I did. And that one included, uh, it kind of messed up its order, so <laughs> there are all these and they included some scrap bags. Um, I think one or two of them have sold. So there are two more scrap bags in there. And yeah, just all sizes because I was trying to use up all the usable size fabrics that I have um, other than my pile of scraps. So there's that. All right. That is it for bags. Oh no, there was one more. I had a custom order. I don't typically do custom orders, but I had a custom order um, that has since been received and if I can find what I did with the picture, I will put it on screen. Um, there were two very large size bags. I have never made one that big before for a zipper bag, so um, it was a little challenging managing in my tight space, but um, there's some leftover fabric so I made a small, it's like a sock size bag. Um, this was the fabric in the custom order. Um, this is fabric I already had, so. And the inside, I heard a door, I mean it's Minion 2's out and about. It's just inside. It's a light green with um, white triangles on it. So, all of those are in the store. And I am sweating, but I am still drinking tea. Sorry, I'm not sweating, I'm glowing. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's it for sewing. Um, oh, I wanted to say good kudos to uh, Jackie of Hooking in Good, good Company for finishing off um, the uh, Vita. She stuck with it, and um, some of her videos were very thought-provoking and um, very interesting, and I appreciate it all, and I enjoyed the ride along with everybody else who do that. I don't know how you do that. Uh, my, I don't think I have anything to to say that I'd be able to record every day <laughs> um, for a whole month. So kudos to you guys. Um, and I watched a video and I just watched um, Crochet Rosetti talk about it, but I watched um, Arnie and Carlos, if you knit and use double pointed needles, um, how to avoid I think it was how to avoid or minimize, avoid laddering when you do double pointed needles. So um, if I remember, I will put the link to that below, but it's very informational. If you are a newish knitter and you're using DPNs, it would be good to know. All right, um, acquisitions. I only have one. I've been trying really hard to not buy. I've gone on, I've seen other like indie dyers and other people do shop updates and I just, I was this close, this close, but I didn't do it. Um, there's even somebody that I follow on Instagram that we chat every now and then and I was gonna support her, but it's out of the UK and the shipping was just, it was astronomical. So I stuck to my no buying and I didn't. Hopefully I will in the future, but right now it was a, motivation not to shop the shipping. But the only thing I did buy um, in the interim is a little um, stitch marker, progress keeper, progress keeper according to knitters from um, Whitney Marie Anderson. And it is, she does, um, what do you call them? Clay um, stitch markers and progress keepers because, not because, what I was trying to say. She makes them and she did a video, I think, a little clips of the process, which is very involved, which is something I will never do. <laughs> I just don't have that kind of patience. But um, again, another kudos to all you guys who deal with clay and have to do all these intricate work. But I got this. So she makes these. She makes these in multiple skin tones from the, I don't know if it's, she does, um, I don't know if she does white ones or she just does, um, you know, people of color 
uh, I know I've seen lighter ones on there, but I don't know if that's just a lighter shade of melanin out there. But yeah. And what I love, it's on a nice big honking, um, I think this is an 18 millimeter clasp. So hopefully you can see that. But she's got the double puff. And when I posted my um, happy mail on Instagram, I remarked that I have never worn my hair in a double puff or even a puff, a high puff, until I went natural. It's always been, when I was little, it was braided in like a big one here and two here, or it was, um, or I've been relaxed, chemically relaxed forever. So you can see now I am <laughs> natural. And Minion too, the nerve of him, he laughed the first time I did this to my hair. And he said, I looked like some rapper named Baby something something. I have, I felt so old because I had no idea who he was talking about. And I felt so old because the name just sounded ridiculous. But anyway, that was my notebook. And I'm going to cool off a little and I'll be right back because I'm hot. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I've angled the fan over here. So it's somewhat hitting me because, I don't know, maybe I'm having a hot flash again. <laughs> I haven't had one of those in a long time. <sighs> but it's quite warm. Anyway, so, um... Works in progress. What I am working on right now, pardon me bending. I am actively working on two things and I have to reach again for the other one. But um, I have put on, I think maybe a couple more rows since the last time or few since the last time I showed this, I think. I think the last time I showed it, I may have been in the green. So this is the Sis Love um, half circle shawl. There is a triangular one as well, but this is the half circle one. So I've gotten this far on it. I'm determined to finish it because I don't want it to become another whip that's just sitting there forever. So, um, yeah, I have that finished and I've got one of my, um, stitch markers on there. This is a, what am I using? It says 3.5. Is that what I was using? No. No, I'm using a 4.5. I don't know why that says a 3.5. I hope I didn't change it. Well, the 4.5 was in the bag, so... Yeah, I need to switch that up. But one of my stitch markers. So, and it's in my Perk Me Up bag fabric. I just got some more of this fabric, um, but I haven't cut into it yet but this is one of my favorites and it matches the bag. So it's all happy. And the inside also matches. <laughs> so that's one. And then the other one I'm working on is in my, <laughs> it's in my official dodgy bag <laughs> from Ellie of Little Drops of Wonderful. And I'm still working on the knit version of the um, Empower People 2020 bandana um, cowl. Um, I had done the crochet version already, and that was a pattern by Busy, Busy Peach. And um, this is the knit version by, I think, Casa Pinka. I will put a link to the Empower People website where you can get, um, they're on Ravelry, but I, th is it? It's on Ravelry as well, but I will, I know there are issues with Ravelry and also people who don't, who have issues with Ravelry before this recent um, thing came up. So I will put a link to the Empower People website where anyone can get hold of it. Um, the color theme for it is all purple. so. I wasn't going to go out and buy anything, and this was in my stash. This is, um, what is that? What is that? Ooh. Loops and threads will like. And the color I think is lavender. Lavender. And I was getting bored of the solo color, so I threw in some, um, Red Heart Boutique Unforgettable in Petunia. I've had this there for a long time. So 
I thought it complemented it well and it just broke up the monotony. So I'm not sure, I'm gonna intersperse this in there. This was every two rows I changed the color. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that again. It's like whatever, whatever floats my boat. So I think it's time to change the color already. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. And um, I can't remember if it called for worsted. I usually don't really follow the pattern. I use whatever yarn I think will work and whatever yarn, you know, calls to me at the time. So I am using the, um, I caked up the Loops and Thrives Wool Like and I am using it tripled. I have a tutorial in my tutorial playlist of how to make worsted yarn into super bulky yarn. You can do that with any yarn. Um, so the Wool Like I think is a number one fine. And I just, I think by tripling it, I hope turned it close to a worsted. So whichever, I'm just using it that way. Yeah, and I am using some chow glue, of course. I pretty much use chow glue and I um, recently was using Knit Picks uh, for the, the shawl I was wearing. That was an old one I started back in 2017. Um, that's when I first started making knit shawls. Uh, I think that was my second knit shawl I'd cast on and it quickly became like a bedside kind of thing and I don't knit or crochet well in bed so it just sat there. So I finally finished it. But what I was trying to say is I use Knit Picks um, interchangeable that I bought. Um, the cord drives me absolutely bonkers and um, it's a five inch whereas I think I prefer the four inch tips which is what the chow glues are so so yeah that's my other work in progress my active work in progress right now of course there's you know bags everywhere so so finished items so I had mentioned a crochet Luna bag that I got um, two years ago I think and in there was my, I called it my me hat, and I was just knitting it. I had some Malabrigo and uh, Rios in Anniversario, and um, it said that I saw that colorway on someone's feed way back when, and it was just so vibrant and gorgeous, and I stalked her page to find out what it is. And when I did, and I bought it, it just, it didn't look the same, so I'm sure she did a little editing to make it more, to make it brighter, a little more appealing. But what I found with Malabrigo is if you find um, a colorway that you like, buy that lot and buy enough because even though they, even though it's the same colorway, the dye lots drastically, drastically differ sometimes. So um, yeah, so this one just reminds me. So this is, I said I was gonna do a sock head hat, but when I looked at it, a sock head hat is basically, it's just your basic, um, your basic knit hat and I can do that. So I just decided to do my own thing, and I just decided to um, knit the brim until I got tired of knitting the brim. So what is that, like four inches? I did about four inches of um, two by two for the brim, and then I just started, and then I increased, because I wanted to use the same needle, so that's the trick I do. Usually you use a lower size, um, a smaller size needle to get a tighter, um, to get a tighter brim than the rest of the hat because you want the brim to, to stretch out but to hug you enough. So what I typically do sometimes is I use the same size needle throughout but I cast on less stitches for the brim and I do my brim and then obviously it's ribbing so it's going to stretch anyway. And then when I start doing the body, I increase. And that's what I did here. So I don't remember what I started with. I'd have to count it, but I don't remember. But I increased to 100 up here. I may have started with 80 here or less. Um, but I increased to 100 and I just kept knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting until I was almost out of yarn. And then I decreased and... Um, 
and I wanted it slouchy because some days I like a slouch some days I don't so you can when you don't want the slouch you can always cuff it and have more of a fitted hat and when you want your slouch it'll hang and hang and hang <laughs> and then this is my decrease it's got 10 spokes and I know because of the colorway you can't see it but it's I think it's quite beautiful I love it yeah so the only thing I don't like is this anniversario colorway it reminds me of like sock yarn like the colorways you see in sock yarn and I am not thrilled with it but I think it's blah enough that it will be neutral enough for me I guess is what I'm saying but it's not what I was after I was after something with a little more punch kind of like that mandala happy happy but that's that you know what I didn't even try it on I just I finished it late let's see oh yeah oh yeah and then if you want to go slouch you're going to have slouch so <laughs> yeah so there's that and then I wanted to make sure I used up all the yarn so first I made my flower this is just a flower. I have a tutorial on this and um, I always modify it so um, but the basic principle is in the tutorial of how to make this and then I still had a little more so I just what was left I made a tassel so there's a little tassel so I can either put the flower on or not I haven't I'm not sure I, I left a long string if I want to permanently attach it I'm not sure and if not I will just put like a hair clip so I can take it on and off and then I was thinking instead of a pom-pom I know I think a pom-pom will be a little too much for a slouchy hat I could just put in the little um the little tassel so that other than the ends that I snipped that is the whole skein of anniversario and I forget how big it was but yeah oh and these are the needles that I used the loops and threads the the plastic kinky needles driving me bananas because I did the whole hat on magic loop so just gonna put it back in here for now till I put everything away so my other big finish let's see oh no hang on I had one more I don't know what I do with it oh there we go I don't remember if I showed this but I was um, I bought uh, I haven't bought a big yarn stash from knit picks in a while but the last one I did maybe was like a year and a half ago I bought or maybe it was longer I bought their big cozy which is a I think it's a 20 it's a 30 70 wool acrylic blend um, yeah so I just made a York hat because I love the color and I forget what the colorway name is I'll put it on the screen if I remember but I just made it for me I think I only had the two balls and I'm I think I used all but a little bit of the second ball so pretty much I you yeah because it was 44 um, it's 44 yards per skein and this takes about less than 90 um, 90 yards to make the hat even the big size so that will be probably my winter hat and it's nice and big right now my hair is what's the word not big <laughs> but once I take these out you know the fro will come back so there's enough room to handle that in here all right um, oh, so <sighs> So that's that. The other thing that I made is, and I don't want to drop everything, but when I sew, I will use the scissors or the snips or whatever, um, the rotary cutter, and I'll put it down, and then I go use it again, and it's like I drop it wherever, and I'm so undisciplined about putting it, you know, in a specific spot, and I'm always rooting through everything. Oh, where did I put this? So 
um, it's almost like YouTube is reading my mind. Uh, one of the recommendations that came up was for a sewing caddy. And I watched a couple of tutorials and then I just kind of winged it. Um, I kind of meshed two of the tutorials together and I had to use what I had, which I used my scraps. <laughs> so, recognize the headband wearing llama, the flower headband llama. I had a couple of pieces cut and they weren't big enough for what I wanted to do, so they became the back and front of this. And then these were just scraps that I had. Um, I made a couple of front pockets, a couple of back pockets. And then there's a pocket on the back. There's supposed to be one pocket on the back, but I divided it as well to, to put things in. So this now, um, you know, the rotary cutter as a home, my, um, my pen and erasable pens are on here. Uh, my pinking rotary cutter, this is a seam roller. If you can't get to the, the iron and so on, you can use that to like roll your seam out to help it lay flat. My little cutting square. So yeah. So the tutorial I watched, so this is open inside. The tutorial I watched has this sitting on a um, kind of those picture frames that sit. It's like a like an upside down L. No, it's not an upside down L. It's like an L frame. It's like the acrylic. If I can find a picture, I'll find. I'll pop it on. But anyway, this is supposed to sit over it. Um, I didn't have one of those. Um, what I did have is. Um, a little, um, you know, you can display plates in those little holders. I had one of those, or even pictures. If you want to sit them on the on the desk, they display in that little holder. So I had one of those, and I put it on there. But this kept tipping over because of the weight, because um, the holder wasn't made for it. So, but at least I have a home for things, and at least at the end of the night, or when I'm done sewing, I can put everything back where it belongs, and I'll know where it is rather than me having to be rooting for it all the time. So, that's that. I may, um, oop, I can see where my sewing was a whole bunch of dodgy right there. My seam's coming apart. Yep, can you see that? Yeah, anyway, um, but it's getting good use. Um, I'm going to look for that stand and maybe make another one to that um, dimensions because I'm sure this wouldn't fit over it because I just, I winged it. <laughs> All right. Whew. What else, what else, what else? I also had another custom order and I don't know if that person wants me to mention them. So I'll just pop a picture. Um, actually, no, I won't do that because I know they haven't received it yet so I won't do that. Um, All right, I think before I show the shawl, my only other finished objects before that, I had shown before that I had um, someone who had seen a customer from a craft fair had contacted me and wanted me to ask if I could do a rattle. So I figured I'd do it on my own and I looked at a few patterns and I did this on my own. I still like it. I know where I can make improvements. So I took the elements that I liked and I do like um, I do like that ball end of it, but the rest of it I would need to, you know, make the ears a little shorter, this just a couple of um, rows shorter, and so on, but it wasn't too bad. And then, um, instead of trying to adjust everything, I just bought a pattern. One of the first ones that I, I saw that I was drawn to, I finally bought it, and I made that. So this one is more, it's tapered up, but there's no ball at the bottom. And um, I figured that was, oh, it's all in one piece, um, which I like. Um, in that same pattern I bought, it came with, it's a three piece. It was a giraffe, a unicorn, and I forget what the other one was. But the unicorn one is two separate pieces where the giraffe and the other thing are just one, um, just one piece. So yeah. So after I was done with this, um, it seemed a little big for me, for a, a baby rattle. So, and this was done with a three millimeter hook and mandala ombre in one of the new colorways, which I forget what it is. 
I think serene is the color. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a little big. So, took a deep breath and I got a two millimeter hook. <sighs> Let me tell you, my fingers paid the price, but it definitely came out tighter. Now, in all of these, I use the um, nylon because it's a baby rattle and all that and it would be manhandled, hopefully. So I wanted to um, use the, uh, the nylon in there. So because this was with same yarn with, you know, a whole size down, two millimeter, definitely tighter, denser. Um, the stuffing, I think I stuffed it just a tad too much because if you hear this versus this, this has more of a rattly sound than this one. But I'm more comfortable with that and this is the size she's gonna go with. Um, yeah, so. And if you can see the size difference, three millimeter versus two millimeter, quite the size difference. Yep. Oh, and I latteed. I latteed the horns. I was gonna put um, spots on here with latte, but since this is going to a baby and since this has the little, you know, wifties, I decided against that because you wouldn't want them picking at it and that getting everywhere. So I think it would be safe up here, but if it was all over where they'd be touching it a lot, yeah. So yeah. This two millimeter took some patience. <laughs> it did, I won't lie. Yeah, it, because the, the needle was so, needle, knitting on the brain. Because the hook was so small, so much smaller than the yarn, it just, it kept splitting the yarn. So it definitely was, um, a lesson in patience dealing with the two millimeter but I like the outcome I have to say the stitches didn't stretch out when you were stuffing it yeah so yeah that's that now um, pardon me as I bend so the shawl I was wearing is called what is it called the spiral staircase shawl um, it's an asymmetrical I do like an asymmetrical um, so I started this with like I said February of 2017 and it promptly got put by the wayside um, I started this with yarn oh I think I've thrown yep I've thrown all the um, all the ball bands away but it's on Ravelry um, I started, and the pattern is on Ravelry as well, I started um, in 2017, and it's yarn from AC Moore, which we know is no longer, and it's their, I think Mystic Waves is the yarn, and it is a, maybe that's the, that's the 70-30 acrylic wool combo, I forget what the, um, oops, notebook again. I forget what this um, big cozy is, but it is a wool acrylic blend. Um, that might be a 23rd, 2080 as well. But yeah, so we know AC Moore isn't around. And when I first bought the yarn, I only bought one. You know, oh, it's pretty. I bought it. I don't know if I would say it was pretty. It was, I think it was definitely on sale or Clarence or something when I bought it. Um, Clarence, I think. A really good sale. So I finished the first skein and then I thought I had two and I didn't. And this was way back when, maybe in 2018 when I had picked it up over the, over the years. Um, and I couldn't find the skein. So then I'm like, oh, this looks like it. I had another um, boutique unforgettable. I forget what the colorway was. It was very close to it. Um, so I picked it up. I'm like, yeah, I think that's the yarn. It's, you know, it's soft enough. As you can see, <laughs> that little bright spot there in the middle, that bright line, that's the Boutique Unforgettable. And back then, I did not know how to tink back. Maybe I could figure out a, a stitch, but a whole row, that wasn't happening. So when I figured out that it was the wrong yarn, I cut it and I left it. 
and I went back to AC Moore and I found the yarn and I bought the last, I think I bought the last two skeins that they had. So this is a three skein um, project. These are 100 grams and the total I think was almost 300 yards of um, worsted weight. So, um, I think I only had one, did I have only one skein left to go when I finally finished it? No, I was almost done with the last skein, no, with the second skein, and then I tied on, um, in this round I tied on. There are spots where, yeah, spots here where I either stretched the stitch or I did something and fixed it incorrectly or whatever. I, I can see my progress and my, my learning that went through here because by the time I finished it, they're way, way better and more even um, there. But it's one of those um, hitchhiker-esque, you know, type shawls with the stair step edging. So yeah, it is cozy Jennifer of cinnamon stitches the squishiness that you your yarn is I'm sure soft and great to work with but garter stitch in soft cozy yarn is just oh, I, I I love it I love garter stitch I love the squish the bouncy the oh, it just works so yeah and then the edging just had um, yarn overs to give it just a little detail and I love that little twirl that it does at the end. So yeah, this will get a whole lot of use come winter time. And wanting to, um, the tail is so long, it can tuck under, but depending on how you use it, I wanted to use one, all of the yarn. Um, that was my number one thing. So I had a little left. So what I did, you know, there are um, these leather cuffs going around well, I'm like, I can just crochet a cuff. That's what I did. So that's all that was left of the yarn, other than, you know, what I stepped for, for weaving in. So, you know, you can either, depends on how thick this part is, you know. Right now I just slide it on, it'll help keep it together. Or you can unbutton it and just wrap it around. It's just um, single crochet in the back loops. So you get yourself a cuff. And I found the perfect button that matches and everything. So, again, all the yarn used. I'm trying not to have a lot of scraps left because I still have a scrap blanket I need to pay attention to. Um, I may pull that out at some point and put a few rows on there. I actually have not scrap, but I have I have a scrap blanket, and then I have a old mermaid tail. I used to make that a lot. Um, but an old mermaid tail blanket I got halfway through and it's been sitting there forever so I started doing a corner to corner coming right off the, the mermaid tail um, I need to finish that as well so so yeah let me get my notebook I don't think I've forgotten anything but if I did oh well um, that's where I am yep so the hat and the shawl were courtesy of, you know, insomnia. I'm a night person anyway, and I have a hard time sleeping, but the last few weeks have been um, especially insomniac, insomniatic, is that a word? I don't know. But um, yeah, Ooh, I did forget one. I um, One thing I did work on, I forgot. One of the my knitting things I wanted to try, one, the sweater, which I did, and I am going to cast on another one at some point. I don't know. All that number five bulky that I um, that I dyed, I'm going to use them in a sweater. I've decided one of these days. But my on my uh, the other thing on my list, other than having to do socks again, I need to do socks. Um, I need to because I need to do it and do it right. I did it on a super bulky and I wasn't too comfortable with the heel and I want to do it again. Um, cabling was the other thing I wanted to do. Oops, oops, oops. My watch band is magnetic, so everything metal, like the little tab on here, sticks to it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to do cables. 
and I had w watched Mr. Hugs, um, Malcolm, I forget what his name is. He has a, a he has a podcast called It Takes Balls to Knit. Um, he's a big cable guy in menswear kind of cable. Um, and he was on Christy Glass Knits ages ago in the early years of her show. And um, he was showing her how to do cable without a needle. And for some reason that really appealed to me. So I decided to give my hand and I just did a basic beanie, but I threw in a cable. And I did this cable without the needle. So there are some parts that are a little snug because you know, my tension and trying to make sure things didn't fall off the needle. And um, some are a little longer than the other because, you know, I just kept going and didn't really think. So this hat is actually, I don't know if I showed this before, but this hat is actually, um, maybe I did show this, but anyway, for Seta's um, July, ooh, that's what I didn't think, I forgot to show. This was Seta's July um, calendar cow, and I dyed the yarn for that. So the cable, I think I did show. Oh well, that's my cable. But speaking of Seta, I forgot. Oops, timber! Yikes. I have to do a amigurumi goat. And the yarn for that that I had stacked up there just took a nosedive. So for her August, um, I haven't even picked my yarn yet for September, but for August, um, I'll pop in a picture of what it's supposed to be. And this is it. Did I even show it? I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. Things things are a blur right now. Um, but this is the hat I made. This is the Wendy hat. Um, it's one of my favorites. I have made countless of them. It's usually, uh, if you get the right color combination, um, people are really fascinated with the button on the side. So you have to get a good button, a nice button, um, and a good color combination. Uh, one year... Um, off-white and like a dusty antique pink was a really big hit um, and anything with sparkles but the buttons and this is like a full leather looking button that I used on the side so yeah that is that um, I don't know when I will do another video it could be next week it could be who knows depends on how things go medically. Um, yeah. Life is lifing and you gotta keep going, right? Uh, the minions go back to school in a couple weeks. Um, Oz got pushed out uh, almost to the end of the month. So they're not complaining. Um, we are, what's the word? We are What's the word they use? Medically, we have a lot of <laughs> reasons to keep them home, family-wise. So right now, um, so that's the plan, and we'll see how things go. And hopefully, you know, we don't have another spike and have to start all this all over again. So we shall see. On that note, and trying to keep it bright, I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. Um... For anyone who's purchased a bag, I really, truly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. I hope it's getting used <laughs> um, for your projects. And I sure am using my own, which, you know, I like to say sometimes I made that. Yeah. <sighs> and, yeah, I think that's it. I'm looking around. Oh, big squirrel just ran by and father minion just got home so that's my good note to bid you guys adieu and i will talk to you guys later and if i forget anything i may or may not be back but we'll see have a good one go have some wine tea lukewarm oh. with fiber <laughs> ah yarn i will talk to you guys later